Tonight in the boat show, we head inland on the hunt for bass on the beautiful Moogara Dam. The team from Tournament Pleasure Boats take us for a cruise along the Gold Coast waterways and show us what feature you should look for in a quality family runabout. Tim Morgan runs us through new technology for your next fishing trip and we catch up with Matt from John Crawford Marine and Chris from Nautilus Marine for our weekly boating and insurance tips. But right now, let's head inland to meet Sean and Matt for some serious bass fishing. It's been a while since we've hit the inland fishing scene, so Sean and Matt kindly take us out on their cracker fishing rig and show us a thing or two about the bass fishing scene. Lake Moogara, the name derived from the Aboriginal meaning of home of the thunderstorm, is about a 90 minute drive from Brisbane or the Gold Coast and 60 minutes from Ipswich. Constructed from 1959 to 1961, Moogara Dam has recovered from its 1% capacity in 1995 to 100% after the 2011 floods. The target species today is bass. Sean and Matt talk us through the setup and plan for our adventure inland. Hi, Sean Falkenhagen down here at Mugra Dam with my mate Matty Johnson. Just out here chasing some bass today. Um, we'll start hopping some mask and slow rolling some plastics through some of these suspended fish and hopefully we'll get onto a few. Uh, this is a legend bass boat uh, imported from the States. This is sort of the, the upper range of the, the tournament bass boats that are available in Australia. Uh, decked out with everything for tournament fishing or just social angling. Got electric motor up the front, depth sounders to find the fish, uh, comfortable seats, uh, nice big motor to get to our spots nice and quickly. As you can see it's, it's pretty plush and a bit, bit flash for a fishing boat but um, yeah it's, it sort of makes everything very comfortable and makes finding fish quick and easy and, and competitive in the bass circuit that's going around. So I'm casting a mask vibe on a Barra Bass XP902 rod perfect for this kind of fishing using 8 pound sunline uh, line with a 8 pound leader on a little Shimano thousand size reel and just hopping and rolling that little mask vibe through the fish. This one's nice and soft so when they pick it up they crunch it down and it feels real natural. What do you run there Matt? Yep I'm running a Barabas uh, IP801 rod uh, with a nice little thousand size Shimano reel three pound uh, power pro line. I've got six pound leader on and I'm uh, using a soft plastic lure, a slider grub. It's a little paddle tail plastic and all we do is just cast it out, let it sink to the bottom. The fish that we're seeing on the sand are showing up as being suspended about 15 foot down and uh, we're in 23 foot of water here at the moment so all we're doing is just giving it a couple of slow winds. With that, that thousand size reel on there we can really slow it down and, and control the, the rate that we retrieve the lure with and as we're just winding it along there we're just giving a couple of little twitches every now and then so the lure is actually going along and, and darting along and looking like an injured fish and trying to flee from a from a predatory um, bass hopefully and then we're just letting it after 10 or so winds drop it back down to the bottom again and repeat and just keep doing that until we see some fish both of us are throwing two different lures to see what the fish are wanting this morning Sean's already got one on the mass fireball stick with the soft plastic for a little while longer. See what happens. I might change over to a bladed lure or something like that soon and see how we go. I guess when I'm looking for a good, a good spot, it, it all depends on what time of the year it is, what dam it is. Um, different dams fish differently. Um, at the moment we're getting into a bit warmer weather. Um, so the fish are sitting out deeper in the cooler weather now starting to come back up onto the shallows and probably another month or so they'll be right back up on the edges so they're kind of in between 
and it's just a little bit of trial and error time on the water um, that's the biggest thing um, so yeah time on the water try the edges try a bit deeper and try really deep that's kind of my when I come out onto a dam that's what I'll try until I find where the fish are and then when you find them that's where you can start catching more how about you Matt um, yeah much the same sort of go off the time of the year and and the dam and the food source that's in there and sort of you know fishing the dams now for sort of five or six years you sort of have an understanding of what the fish are doing at that time of year on the certain dams um, talk to a few of your mates to see where where they've been fishing and what they've been catching um, looking at the sounders and sort of seeing where the fish are and what they're doing on the sounders you can tell by the fit the way the fish mark on the sounder sort of what type of fish they are if they're just suspended fish or hugging the bottom or really active fish or anything like that so that sort of gives you a clue of, of sort of what lures sometimes you can use um, on on this boat I run Lorance sounders they're, they're awesome for for the bass fishing that that we do uh, that just the clarity that they've got and the uh, the way that they can be set up to, to see the fish you can pick the size of the fish before you even catch them you can say oh yeah these are better fish or these are small fish or they're yellow belly or whatever so um, with a bit of experience on the water that's sort of what we can get to so that that's generally what I do start at when I go to a dam sort of go to a dam that I here might be fishing well or, or I remember fished well this time last year and go there and sort of start looking at what you did last time and then just see where the fish should move from there and, and try to piece something together in, in an hour or so. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. With no luck at secret spot number one, the guys decided to try spot two and see if we have any luck there. So basically what we've got here is on these Laurent sounders this is a, a four screen split, so we've got a GPS down the bottom left here, a uh, down imaging sounder there, a uh, side imaging view there, and then the raw sonar view. So as we're going around, we're just looking at where we are in relation to some other GPS marks that we've had. We're looking for fish showing on the sounder here. You can see through the middle there a really strong thermocline, which is typical for this time of year as the water temperature starts to heat up. On our side imaging here as we're going along, we're just looking for fish showing up on the side imaging. And then in that, all that clutter, all that thermocline there, it can be hard to see whether the fish are bait fish or whether they're bass or whether they're, sometimes you get a, a little bit of cloudiness uh, in, this, in the view. And the down imaging seems to clear that out and you can sort of really see the fish more defined. So as we, what we're doing is we're just going around and we're just working around some banks. We know roughly the depth that the fish have been sitting in and we're just sort of zigzagging around to see where the fish are. At, at the moment, they sort of seem to be sitting on a, on a break line or where it drops in, into an old creek bed in, or into a gully and around that sort of 16 to 18 foot mark where it's dropping into about 25 foot. So we're just doing a bit of sounding around here. With uh, the side imaging set up here, we can see 120 feet either side, so we can cover a fair amount of ground instead of just shooting straight down, which is what the, the sonar and the, the down imaging does. Just shoot straight down, but with the side imaging, we can pick up the fish that are schooling up out wider. Uh, so that's basically what we're doing here, just sounding around and there's no point fishing where there's no fish just because the spot looks good. You, you've got to have some fish sewing around as well. So the, the fish finders or depth sounders that are around nowadays are just really important for for finding fish. You need to have good quality equipment like this to find fish quickly and be confident in what you're seeing on the sounder is actual, actually fish and, and bass that you're gonna be able to catch. Uh, quite often we'll spend a lot of time sounding around. You might spend an hour or so sounding around looking for fish. And then once you find fish, you can have the next hour or so just catching fish. It's a lot better than sitting around for two hours and not catching anything. <laughs> So there you can see all the fish showing up here, these big yellow, these big yellow um, green and yellow blotches there, they're, they're fish. And up here on the uh, down scan you can see the fish showing up as white dots. As we slow they'll, they'll expand out into big lines. And on the side imaging here we can see all these little dots in that dark blue section there on both sides. They're the fish that have been picked up in the side imaging there. So that's a really good showing of fish there that we've seen. We can sort of see from these fish here and the strength of the returns there. You can see that that's sort of blue, red, green and yellow in these fish here. All these other smaller dots here are just blue and red. So they're quite weak, weak returns, which means that they're probably bait fish or plankton blooms or something like that. Whereas with these ones here being the, the four colours that they are, that shows us that that's a really strong return that the, the sound is picking up and that we're going to be able to say that they're, they're better sized fish. So we'll uh, stop and have a fish to them and see what happens. 
We'll catch up with the guys again after the break.